Hey, happy Monday morning. Uh, we are live in the Woodward Sports Studio. There is going to be a lot more activity coming out of this studio in the next coming weeks. Uh, our production level is going to get a lot better, so you won't have to be watching Facebook Live videos off my phone anymore. But with all that being said, I don't give a shit what we look like. Uh, That's right. Let's talk about the Detroit Lions game yesterday. Adam and I were sitting in here writing up some articles. We were having a conversation, and I was just like, you know what? We need to record this, and we need to talk about it. So here we are on Facebook Live. Um, Adam, Matt Patricia. <sighs> give me your thoughts on Matt Patricia. <laughs> He's a fraud. He's a fraud. Um, he gets out coached, I'd say, almost every game. He wins 29% of his games and walks up to his post-match conference like he, he's a genius. It's amazing. Yeah, his comment know. yesterday of, I had a lot of work to do when I got here. 9-7. and seven. You, What team was 9-7? and seven? I don't understand. That pissed me work. off more than anything I, I think I've ever heard out of Matt Patricia's mouth. We, I think we've been saying it for the longest time. He's He doesn't take responsibility for anything. And right. It's obvious. And, and No wonder the team gives up 14-point leads. No wonder... They get blown out half the time it's because there's no responsibility on the field or off of the field. It's and when you point. come into a perennial playoff team, we are making the playoffs 50% of the time under Jim Caldwell. You take over a winning team coming off back-to-back nine and seven seasons, and then you say you had a lot of work to do. Here's where I get pissed off, Matt Patricia. I hope you're listening right now. If you know Matt Patricia, tag him in this video because here's the deal, Matt Patricia. Back in 2003... We had this team called the Detroit Pistons. They were winning about 50 games a season. 50 and 32 was traditionally their record. And, of course, we had Rick Carlisle as their coach. And we felt like Rick Carlisle just couldn't get us to that next level. Just couldn't get us to that next level. But we had a perennial playoff team. We were making it to the Eastern Conference Finals. We just couldn't get over that next level. So what did we do? What did we do, Adam? Who did we bring in? Brought in Larry Brown, baby. Larry Brown. And you know what? That is exactly what Matt Patricia was supposed to be. Matt Patricia was supposed to be the Lions' Larry Brown. Take our 9-7 and seven team and take it to the next level. You didn't hear Larry Brown come in and say, oh, I got a 50-win basketball team. I knew there was a lot of work to do. No, you take that team that's already doing well and you elevate them to the next level. I do right. not know why Matt Patricia is making excuses like this. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, I think the situation was different with Larry Brown, obviously, but I find it hilarious now looking back how the media treated uh, Jim Caldwell, considering all the excuses, whether it was, oh, we won all of our nine games coming back in the fourth quarter or whatever it was. The team was winning football games. Yep. It's very hard to do in the NFL, and it blows my mind, because Matt Patricia makes it look very difficult to win very football difficult. games. So, what what have we mean, won in our last, what, 15 games we've won one? Yes. No. 13. 14. 13 or 14 games we've won one game. And then I believe he's 10, 25, and 1 as head coach in the NFL. It's kind of hilarious. Which is hilarious because it is worse than when Jim Schwartz took over an 0-16 team. I think he's the second or third most uh, or worst Lions head coach percentage-wise ever. Only behind Rod Marinelli and... uh, I don't know who the hell's in front of him. I'm pretty sure Rob Marinelli's in front of him. But, but here's the deal. Jim Schwartz came in. He took over an 0-16 team and made us competitive. And he didn't sit there and bitch and cry and say, I needed to do a lot of work when I got to Detroit. You had a 9-7 and football team, you fat bastard. And you've taken it and you've run it into the fucking ground. That's right. And this is what I got to do on Monday morning? Like, for real? We could have been 2-2 two and two, sitting here 2-2 two and two, and been like, damn, the Lions are 2-2. Two two. Yeah. We're in the bye week. Oh, yeah, this is going to be so this. good. It was so uh, Yeah, you did, you did text me that. I, fucking, Why? I texted you. We deserved it because we won a game against the Cardinals. Perfect game plan. Controlled the clock. Kept Kyler Murray off the field. Forced the turnovers. Probably weren't going to do that against Drew Brees. But, you know, it was a good, it was a good week. And, you know, that little hype train, when you're a fan, you're like, Oh, shit, I can believe in this. <laughs> and then, you know, walk into the Saints, no Michael Thomas. You have the whole week to prepare for Alvin Kamara. And seven players out. Seven, Not only players. This isn't like their <sighs> fullback good, was good out players. or like their backup yeah. lineman. We're talking their number one wide receiver, mm-hmm. their number one tight end, two of their top DBs. Yeah. Seven players were out, and we still couldn't get it done. Yeah. Now we got to talk about your boy and my boy, Matt Stafford. Yeah, man. 
that's different. That was part of the conversation that we were having before we got on here. Um, can we all agree it's just time to move on from Matt Stafford? As much as a nice guy that he is, as, as much, much as, as he's done for the football team, uh, which wasn't much uh, success-wise, but you know, he was a franchise quarterback in the sense that he brought stability to a dysfunctional franchise for the last what? Twelve years. Twelve years. 12 years. Yeah. The Lions haven't made the playoff or haven't won a playoff game in over fifty years. Right. 20, Twenty-five years, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, 91. Yeah, 91. And, okay, we've won one oh. playoff game in like 50 years, right? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stafford has been a part of 12 years of that. That is such a large percentage that we've given to this and guy. And the talent we've given him, the defense we've given him, uh, the offensive-minded coordinators we've given him, it's very frustrating. Uh, again, as much as he's done for the football team, can we just – take a step back and be like, okay, time to move off. Let's go get a young quarterback, a young offensive-minded coach. You have to trade him while he has value. If yeah. we don't trade him now, we're never going to get, get anything for him. No, anything. So what are we going to have? The past 12 years of Lions football that absolutely was not the it best. Resulted in nothing. <laughs> it did result in nothing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we had those moments, but those moments couldn't... We never did anything. He doesn't beat teams that have a winning record. Right. Uh, doesn't, he, hasn't won a playoff game. He just doesn't have that it factor, and that's that's what you need as a quarterback. You need that little it, you know, whatever it is. I don't is. think he has that it, but that's a good way of putting it, whatever that it is. Because what? it's hard to describe because, you know, if you look at him statistically, he probably has over 30 career fourth quarter comebacks, so... Yeah, but who cares about fourth quarter comebacks? I'm sick of that being Matthew Stafford's, like, only calling card is, oh, I got fourth quarter comebacks. It's like, who gives a shit about fourth quarter comebacks? That's why he doesn't have that. Sorry, I had to charge my phone. You're good, you're good. (laughs) But who gives a shit about fourth quarter comebacks? What did we just set the NFL record for this week? We set the NFL record for six consecutive, first team in NFL history with six consecutive losses. While leading? While leading uh, with ten points or more. So if Stafford's responsible for the comebacks, he's got to be responsible for the collapse as well. So Stafford just said an NFL. Okay, so let's do this. Let, instead of the Lions, <laughs> if Matt Stafford is the only one that's responsible for the comebacks, then Matt Stafford should be the only one responsible for the fall aparts, right? By that logic, absolutely. I mean, if we're gonna play when fair, you, yeah. so Matt Stafford has the NFL record for blown leads. Losing six while leading by ten points, and that is uh, that is going on right now. We're living history right now. So Matt Stafford, thank you for providing us with history. And I'm so sick of people. If, if we you... ever get in a Matt Stafford conversation, do not mention his comeback shit because the reason you have to come back is because you're losing and you're not doing anything with your other possessions. I want a quarterback that's winning going into the fourth quarter. Like who? What's the, who's the quarterback that has the most leads going into the fourth quarter? That's an important stat, not who can come back because they've sucked for three quarters. This and reminds then finally... me of Tim Tebow. Remember when Tim Tebow was like in full effect, that whole Tebow shit? Yep. He'd play horrible for three quarters. His defense would keep him in it, and then he would get a fourth quarter comeback. But guess who got a playoff win? Tim Tebow. Guess who doesn't have a playoff That's win? That's right, baby. <laughs> God damn. God damn. How does That's that... so depressing. <laughs> that is the... Right. <laughs> And we were just trying to compare who Matt Stafford is. Tim Tebow is maybe one of them. Um, yeah. I I can tru- I look at Matt said, Stafford. Yeah. Who did you Go say? Ahead. I said Kirk Cousins. You said uh, Jay Cutler. I said Jay Cutler. Um, Kirk Cousins, I also think, is a good – but Kirk Cousins has a playoff win. That's right. Kirk Cousins took Washington and made them a contender. Could, you, could Stafford do that? No, Stafford couldn't do that. And the point earlier Adam said was he he wants to see Stafford go play for another team just so he can see if he, he should get all the credit yeah. and if he will excel. But in my review of Stafford looking like Jay Cutler, Jay Cutler bounced around a lot of teams. I mean, he, he was in Denver, then he was supposed to be the savior in Chicago, then he went to Miami. He's got the arm just like Stafford, but he's a head case just like Stafford. I mean... Jay Cutler will blow up more in front of you. You can tell when Jay Cutler gets off the bus, you can tell he's an asshole. Yeah. Right? Like you're yeah, like, Matt ah, Stafford that... does a good job of hiding it. Matt Stafford's a nice guy. Yeah. He'll smile. He'll do stuff in the community, which I love. Thank you, Stafford, for everything you've done for the Detroit community. Your wife does great things too. But this isn't about nice guys. 100%. This is about winning football games. Like a bunch of people bitch when we signed Adrian Peterson, Anson Wells. Anson bitched. Oh, we're signing Adrian Peterson. We're going to get thrown out of the league for what he did to his kid. And it's like, listen, 
First of all, my dad used to hit me with a belt, so if, if Adrian Peterson beats his kid with a switch, that, whatever, that's what they do down south. My dad was from the south, and belts were a plenty in my house. That's neither here nor there. I'm not looking for saints anymore. Yeah. I am not looking for Boy Scouts anymore. I'm looking for Ray Lewis who will hire a motherfucker to kill somebody and then on Sundays go out there and kill somebody on the field. Like, those are the guys I want. I want Ray Lewis types. I, I, think I want just gangsters. Win. I think you just want to win. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care what it takes. If, yeah, if, if it required the... Boy Scouts, if Boy Scouts could win football games and nice Let's guys finished first, yeah. let's sign up all the nice guys we can. But... Not today, no. Like, look at the Kareem Hunt situation. We He's were too, balling in Cleveland, though. But we were too good for Kareem Hunt yeah. because he had something on his record. Yeah. What the... F- I mean... Okay, I mean... It's, it's a bigger problem than just that, though. Oh, yeah. everything's a problem. I mean... Everything's a problem, but still. From an organization standpoint, uh, I don't know when we're going to have the conversation, but it has to happen soon. Uh, I don't have... S- Four or five billion dollars. I don't know if you do. Not yet. Uh, somebody, we need new ownership. Uh, as much as I think Bob Quinn's done a decent job, he's failed completely and miserably in two of the most important categories, which is culture and getting the right head coach. Yep. So no matter what I think of his drafting skills, which aren't that great, take out this year. Galladay, carry on. I know carry on's had injury carry problems, on. but he hasn't turned he out what we thought he was. Uh, I think solid football players. I don't think you need to hit. Star. But then we got to look at the second but, round draft and Tavai. Well, we got to look at. I, I look at. I look at the first round. Uh, although I love Hawkinson, eight for a tight end. <laughs> yeah. And again, I love Okuda, but three for a cornerback. Chan Bailey didn't win any, uh, any Super Bowls for his teams. Jalen Ramsey's not leading his teams to a Super Bowl. No. Uh, uh, remember Asamoah or whatever his name was, Namdi Asamoah from yep. uh, the Raiders? Yep. All these amazing corners do not directly lead to Super Bowls. You know what wins Super Bowls? A fucking head coach, a good GM, and a goddamn quarterback. Yeah. That's the recipe for a Super Bowl in the NFL. Mm. Yeah, you draft a man. cornerback when you need a luxury piece. Like when You, you draft a corner if, if you have, your team is good. And you can add a rookie corner in the right. slot and right. play him around a, a, an experienced team. Not, hey, go guard Michael Thomas and Devon, Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins. But this all, this all goes back to the ownership, putting that onus on them. If you don't make the playoffs this year, you're not going to do shit. So yeah. that led them not to draft a quarterback because you don't want to offend Stafford. It's frustrating. And you see what Herbert's doing. You see what Burrow's doing. Yeah. We don't know what Tua's going to do, but even if he's between Herbert Why and Burrow. Why couldn't we have Burrow, traded, uh, trade, not trading back still puzzles me. Yeah. And it's all because, again, ownership has a big fucking mouth. Yep. If you don't come out and say it's winner or lose or whatever, winner or bust this year. Right. People can say, oh, well, you know, maybe they're going to rebuild. You know, maybe they're serious about trading back. Uh, maybe, you know, we should move forward. What if they take Tua? What it, if they take Herbert? It's gambling. Like, you don't, you don't share you don't show what your cards can. ever, yeah. ever, ever. It's like, okay, maybe we really do want tr- Stafford forever. But you know what I'd say? Yeah, we're open for trades. You know, like you yeah. always do the opposite. It's Sun Tzu you take, Art of War. You when you're weak, you pretend you're strong. You when you're take, strong, you pretend you're weak. You take all the calls. You field all the calls for every player, for every situation. Yes. You don't. I don't know, man. That's so <laughs> frustrating. I'm so pissed right now. Well, we I'm just. I'm not want... even mad about the loss, honestly. I'm no. Mad of the overall. <sighs> I'm mad of the loss of the last 12 years under Stafford. Like, that's what I am mad about. You know, we, um, we've given the kid more than enough time. No oh, yeah. one improves. More than enough talent. Fuck the time. No one improves after their 12 year. Like, when have you heard of, oh, rare. well, his 13-year quarterback is finally seeing an uptick. It, it's, we did this four seasons ago, five seasons ago with Stafford. It was against the Chargers when we opened up Amir Abdullah was a rookie. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Stafford, they were calling it out on the uh, play-by-play. They were like, wow, you know, he's reading the defense. He's making uh, adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Yep. We, uh, did we beat the Chargers that week? I don't know. I don't remember. I'm not sure. We had like a good start to that year, and then we lost like seven straight games or something. I don't know. Something only the Lions do. Yeah. So. Uh, I, don't I don't know. Mean, so that's where we're at with I'm the Lions. With excuses. <laughs> it's, we got a bye week, so at least next week we won't get that Suffer. Sunday kick in the dick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that is the Monday morning quarterback show with myself and Adam. Uh, oh, Woodward Sports. Make sure you're following us. Make sure yeah. you tell your friends about us. We got some big things planned. Uh, right. We're going to do an official launch coming up at the end of the month with all of our shows, all of our programming. 
A um, lot of cool things happening behind the scene. As you see, we're finally uh, getting into our main studio. So make sure you like the page, follow the page, like us on all social media. We're taking over That's Detroit great. sports. We're finally giving Detroit's young sports fans something to listen to. Not a bunch of old dudes talking on the radio, on AM radio about Matt Stafford. Like, no, these we're going to bring you real opinions from actual fans, too. Like... We're not going to sit here and bash, 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 but we're going to call it out like it is when we have to call it out like it is. But at the end of the day, we're still Lions fans, right? Oh, of course. We're never going to give gonna this up. Them. I Always know. Gonna support them. And I just 100%. wish they'd support me back. Like, I, I feel like I'm in a one way relationship. Like, Lions, I love you. I, I watch you every Sunday. Like, I give you my money. I pay for tickets. Right. I, I rock <sighs> your apparel. Yeah. I, uh,. Jeez, just I want I want to wear a lion's coat one time with so much pride, like around the country. You know, when you wear something lions across the country, like people just look at you like like you just lost your dog. They're like, "Oh, you okay?" It's like, "No, I'm not okay. I've been abused my whole life by my favorite football team." It's bad, man. It's bad. <laughs> we'll see what happens during the bye week if they get rid of Patricia and give Quinn his eight week notice. Or whatever, fire him too. I don't know, but you have to get rid of Patricia today. You have to. Patricia it, has to be gone before next our next game. No, it has to happen today. You got to give the coach today. two weeks. No, you have to give your interim coach at least two weeks. With the Lions, it's not going to happen. If we were a functional organization, I'd say yes. It has to happen today, Adam. It has to happen today. Fire Patricia today. And if you want to see a funny video that Adam doctored up, uh, we took the Joker. (laughs) And you know how uh, Matt Patricia always wears a stupid fucking pencil pencil in his ear. Um, The Joker got rid of the pencil. If you want, go to woodwardsports.com, check out the video, or it's up on all of our social media. Terry Foster, thanks for the retweet. We appreciate that. Shout out to my boy Tyler Rich. Watch him right now. My dad blames me, by the way, Tyler, for uh, the Detroit Lions failures. You're I was born in 94, and I think that was uh, the last <laughs> time they made a playoff yes. appearance for like 14 years or something like that before uh, Stafford came in. So, Well, your dad can blame me because I was born in 81, and we haven't won shit my entire life either. So, <laughs> And anybody born from 1958 on, you're to blame too. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's it for our Lions morning show. We were just having the conversation on the couch and thought we should bring you all into it. So um, thank you for watching. It's Woodward Sports. Like I said, add us. Follow us on everything. Uh, we got some really big things happening. Um, The show lineup that we are going to announce at the end of the month is going to fucking blow your mind. That's right. It's it's blowing my mind. I did not expect. We have some great, great people coming in. We're really excited to work with some great people. We're going to do really good things for the city of Detroit. Yeah, I did not expect the people that that are going to be a part of this that wanted to be a part of this. And it's it's been fun to watch Woodward Sports grow. So thank you all for being there at the beginning. When we're taking over Fox Sports, when we're taking over ESPN, when we're taking over 97 won the ticket, you could say that you saw it from my house, us recording videos in my house, to now our studio, and then eventually our own huge network so thank you for watching detroit we're here for you we're here for your sports when you hurt we hurt that's right (laughs) and i fucking hurt right now